Hey everyone, today's a big day because it marks the first anniversary of me picking up my Model X. So in today's video, I thought I'd spend a little bit of time and just give you my overall thoughts of the one-year ownership of the car, what I like, what I don't like, what the experiences have been, and um, just give you my overall thoughts. So the first thing is, I'm just going to start it like this and just say this is absolutely the best car I've ever owned. Um, it hasn't been without its issues and most of those issues have been really at the beginning of the ownership um, you know just like any other car there's no such thing as a perfect car um, I had a few little issues the biggest issue that I really had with the car was this passenger side door first thing that I had was that the inner seal now of course the door has two seals one on the body one on the door um, so the one on the door uh, the bottom part came unstuck, so Tesla just, you know, put replaced that, so that wasn't an issue. I did have another problem with the window. When I first got the car last year, it was just before we had a really, really bad cold snap. I've talked about this before, um, but this window at one point failed to actually go back up. It came back down at one point, and it wouldn't come back up. Um, apparently, Tesla had a bad rash of, uh, um, I don't know, window motors or something like that, so they replaced that on warranty, and ever since then, haven't had any more issues. Um, the only other issue I had, and uh, and I know some people have been asking quite a bit about the Falcon wing doors. Now, the Falcon wing doors, as far as I'm concerned, um, they work really great. I don't have any issues with them other than, you know, a little bit flashy and stuff like that. So you got to be careful about where you are. You know, those of you who own a Model X, there are times when you go out in public and stuff and maybe a little weary of opening them because, you know, they, they get some attention. It's great for car shows, mind you. Um, but other than that, it's like, uh, well, there's so many of them around here. It's not that big of a deal. So I don't worry about that too much, but as far as function and concern, they've never let me down. Don't have any issues. I did have one small issue though. And because of a very slight misalignment on this Falcon wing door, I was getting a little bit of premature paint wear on the inside door jam. And I think it was because the weather stripping, uh, was off or something like that. So anyways, Tesla just fixed that. Never been a problem ever since. The drivetrain on this car is absolutely stellar. I've never had any issues, um, especially in the cold winter months. It's great because I can preheat the car. You know, I've had other people and neighbors, of course, with gas cars when it gets supremely cold outside, you know, they have trouble starting their cars. This car has never let me down. It's always been great that way. Let's see here. What else have I done? Lots and, uh, well, a fair amount of uh, road trips. I mean, I have 34,968 kilometers. I don't know what that is in miles, but I put it down here for you guys. And uh, like I said, it's been absolutely trouble-free. I've done quite a few uh, road trips, uh, all on the supercharger network for the large part. Thank you, Tesla, for that. It's been absolutely wonderful. I did a road trip this past summer. If you watched a previous video, I went out to Vermont. And uh, even though it's off the beaten path a little bit, uh, there are plenty of level two chargers if you absolutely need that. In our case, at our destination where we stayed at a ski resort, there were plenty of level two chargers, so that was never an issue. It's getting better and better all the time now. We've seen a lot of growth in the supercharger network where I live here in the greater Toronto area. When I first got the car, going to my dad's place was a little iffy because we were really waiting for one more supercharger to open. Since then, we've had like three others open, so it's never been an issue. As far as range is concerned, I know a lot of people are asking about this. Now, just so you know, my configuration is a 75D and I paid for the pearl white paint. I paid uh, a little extra for the white seats, which I really like. And I got the six seat option, which in my opinion, my opinion is the nicest configuration, but it's not the most flexible. So if you wanna carry things, if cargo is really important to you, you're better off with the seven or the five seat configuration because these two seats here don't fold down. So it's great as a people mover in this configuration, but if you're gonna move things, uh, look at the other uh, two configurations. They're better value as far as that's concerned. Oh, I did get an enhanced autopilot, which I use only on the highways, um, which is great. And I've seen lots of improvements over that. So we're looking forward to some of the other stuff that's going um, on. But uh, I wanna talk about range because a lot of you are asking about that. Now, ostensibly this car has uh, about the same uh, size battery pack is a long range Model 3. We know the Model 3, you know, the EPA is rating it at 80.5 kilowatt hours. This is 75, usable maybe about 70. So, uh, you know, in summer months, it's great. Uh, I get 350-ish kilometers in the winter months because things are cold. Um, you know, and this is a heavier car than a Model 3, of course. Uh, it's a brick aerodynamically compared. I mean, it's very sleek, uh, but you know, it is an SUV. So in the uh, winter months, I'm seeing eh, 275, 280, somewhere in there. Um, 
perfectly adequate for daily driving on longer road trips. Well, you make an extra charging stop. It's not the end of the world. So um, it's definitely uh, an adjustment at first, but you get used to it so quickly. I charge the car every day to 90%, never seen any issues. Right now I'm charging to 90% and in the um, winter months, uh, because of the cold and so on and so forth, I get up in the morning and it shows about 89. That's what I'm showing right now. So I don't know if it's battery degradation or whatever, but hey, it, it's still great. By the way, I always operate in the, um, in the battery mode, uh, not range mode, it shows me percentage. I find for me, my personal opinion here, that I don't suffer for any range anxiety. I just know when I hit about 20%, uh, it's time to look for a charger. Otherwise, I really don't worry about the range on the car. Like I said, for daily driving, it's never an issue. Stuff I don't like. <laughs> not crazy about the black gloss wood interior on this car. They call it um, ash or something. I forget what, what they call it. I didn't have a choice. I ordered this car. It was inventory. It was on its way to Chicago, uh, um, uh, to Toronto from Chicago. And at the time, I, I, I needed to buy the car. Personally, if I had the option at the time to custom order the car because of timing, I would have sprung uh, for a little extra and got the carbon fiber decor. But at the end of the day, I just kind of live with it. It's great. It hasn't scratched or anything like that because normally I don't touch the dash. A lot of you know my thoughts on the gloss interior on the Model 3. I don't like it. It needs to change. I mean, Tesla has seems to have this fetish with gloss. Uh, they tried it on the Model X originally and the Model S on the back of the seats. They've since switched to more of a, a soft finish rather than the gloss. So personal opinion, of course, uh, I think the gloss finish on the Model 3 will change eventually. I did buy some vinyl, some very special vinyl that I couldn't find anywhere locally. I had to source it out of the US. When I get a heated garage or somewhere that I can, or, or I might even wait till the spring and stuff. I'm going to try and do a vinyl wrap and uh, cover up the gloss on this just, just to change it up a little bit. I'm used to it now. It doesn't bother me all that much. Uh, it's not my first choice, as like I said, but uh, I got something that'll change it up a little bit. And, and uh, when it gets a little warmer, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to tackle that. Other than that, um, let me see here. What else do I don't like? Oh, <laughs> these visors. Um, and of course, you can't see them here. They're, uh, they're not the best. Um, I find that because they're magnetically held on, and you can't see it here, I'll, I'll show you a little clip here in the video in a second. Don't catch them just right when you're driving down the road. Um, they will rattle a little bit. So um, I've since found a way to get them in there really good. Um, other than that, not much I really don't like about the car. It's, it's, it's been really great. Fit and finish on this one was really good. I know fit and finish um, for some people seems to be hit or miss. Uh, this one's been really great. The only time I've ever had an issue was a little bit of a slight gap higher on this A-pillar cover on the passenger side and Tesla just came back and readjusted that. It's not a problem. Um, let me see here. What are the other things? I can't really think of anything else. Um, my personal opinion, though, is the best feature of the car is this windshield. I mean, if you've never been in a Model X, oh, this windshield is incredible. You know, a lot of people, I've, I've shown this car a lot of, a lot of times, uh, you know, I take passengers for rides and stuff, and I don't know what it is. It's kind of funny. People, people get in the car, and unless sometimes you point it out, they don't see the windshield. I don't know if it's the tinting or something like that, but the moment you point it out, people's eyes just bug out of their heads. They've never seen anything like it. So anyways, it makes a good impression. Um, I wish more cars had something like this. And of course, with the Model 3, they took basically this idea and they put it in the back. So I think that's that's a, that's a really neat, uh, neat idea on their part. I hope that Tesla keeps doing more glass like this on other cars. Oh, other things I don't like? Uh, let's talk about that. I think the mirrors are a little bit on the small side. I think... Um, uh, not only the rear view mirror, I mean, I'm used to the rear view mirror. It's pretty small, it's frameless and stuff, but the view out of the back of the Model X is not the best because it has a very tiny window. I've got the two passenger seats in the back there and they stick up. So it, uh, and, and yeah, you, you can drive with the camera and stuff, but I, do, I don't really bother with that. So I'm kind of used to it. I'm, you know, now that the autopilot upgrade has seen, uh, you know, more of a blind spot thing that takes some of the worries away. But yeah, the side view mirrors, see the way that I adjust my mirrors is according to the SAE, the, uh, the um, I think it's, yeah, the automotive engineers. Anyways, they have a thing where you adjust the mirrors to the point where you, can, you can't even see the car anymore. And I have them at full deflection. And um, I wish they went out maybe another half inch. Um, it really needs, you know, I don't know what it is about the design and stuff like that. I mean, they're good. They're good mirrors, but I just think they're a little bit on the small side. Again, everything is a compromise. In electric cars, you, you can't have all these things half, uh, hanging off the outside of the car because it affects your aerodynamics. So, um, you know, Tesla always shows prototypes, of course, that don't have any mirrors. Of course, they can't get rid of the mirrors yet because legislation won't let them. As soon as legislation allows them to get rid of mirrors, I can, <laughs> you can bet that Tesla will be the first guys to take them off. The Model X has a really big front trunk. 
I really don't use it all that much. Um, there's times when we go on vacation or something like that. I'll put a cooler in there. Um, any food that needs to stay cool or something like that goes in there. But otherwise, I, I really don't use it all that much. I do keep quite a bit of stuff in the bottom well in the back. So I got a Chatmo adapter in there. I've got my floor mats. Um, I've, I have um, an extra floor mat that when I put the seats down in the back, it, it lays down flat. So I always keep that with me because, you know me, I, I don't like a dirty car. So I always make sure that I keep that in there. Moving things in cargo. Well, because like I said, because these seats don't fold down flat, um, it, it can be a bit of a challenge if you need to move things. Like my wife and I back in the spring uh, bought a uh, used bed frame. Uh, that we needed for one of our spare rooms and stuff. And uh, thank God it was an Ikea one because we were able, we were able to uh, take it apart and stuff it in the back of the car. Uh, so that fit. Uh, but, you know, that is the one and only time I wish I was like, oh, I wish the seats, uh, you know, kind of folded down. Other than that's not really been uh, that much of an issue. Let's see here. What else? Operational costs. I mean, I bought a side of winter tires for the car, but other than that, there's no oil changes. There's never been any maintenance. Haven't changed windshield wipers, no oil, no, like none of that stuff. Charging costs, uh, because I'm on a special plan where I live with my power uh, company, they have a, a special plan where I get a rebate um, every billing cycle uh, because they have a, a super reduced rate at, uh, now the raw cost is two cents per kilowatt hour between midnight and 6 a.m. I mean, there's delivery fees over and above that. But um, at the end of the day, the, the cost of operating this car is about $25 in electricity. Um, for me, that's huge savings because with my Lincoln before, I was spending, well, at today's gas prices, well, they've come down a little bit. But, uh, you know, easily $300 a month. So that's a lot of money. It's about, you know, it's a tenth of the cost to operate this car. Now, some of you are probably asking, uh, what's going on with the Model 3? Aren't you getting a Model 3? Isn't the Model 3 Owners Club channel? Oh, why are you driving a Model X? Like, I, I get that all the time. We still have a reservation for our Model 3. Uh, this is my primary vehicle. This is what I needed uh, to run my business and stuff because Model 3 is a little too, too small to move computer boxes. And anyways, I have my own reasons for that. Uh, so I still have a reservation. Uh, it's largely going to go to my wife if she chooses to replace her aging. Uh, Volkswagen, which doesn't get driven all that much. So it doesn't really make any sense for us to buy a Model 3 right now, uh, given the prices. Uh, like I said, many times we're waiting for the standard range car. At that point, it's up to her to make the decision whether she wants the Model 3. I can't afford uh, a second car at this point just to have it sit there. Still going to continue the channel. We're going to bring you lots of information. I have plenty of Model 3s around me if I need to do content on. So uh, don't worry about that aspect. Um, we're fortunate we were able to win, well, win, win two discounts. 100% discounts on uh, on two roadsters. So uh, awesome. Thank you very much for all of that. Uh, like I said, that's a couple years away. We don't know what's going to happen with that. Uh, obviously, we're not going to be able to keep both cars. It's just ridiculous. So one of them will be sold uh, immediately. You know, the proceeds from that will help pay off any uh, any you know exposure we have on taxes and income tax and all that other stuff that we have to do because we're not getting off scot-free these cars may be free but there are lots of tax implications and stuff so we're looking at that actively but uh, thank you for all of you for helping us get there it's really appreciated now as far as upgrades are concerned with the car I haven't done all that much I mean when I first got delivery of the car I took it to uh, Fabian Evelyn thank you Fabian did an awesome job on my car he installed the uh, paint protection film on the front hood and the fascia the headlights uh, fenders and the mirrors and he also did a full ceramic coating. Uh, we're going to do a video. It might be out before this one. I don't know. But um, we're going to do a little reprisal on uh, Fabian and you know follow up on him and stuff. But uh, highly recommend it if you can afford to do it. Get both done. It's been awesome. I love washing my car in the summer months. And the ceramic coating makes uh, you know child's play washing the car. So highly recommend that. I like that a lot. I'm glad I got the paint protection film because I do have some uh, little stone chips on the front of the car. So uh, largely that's helped to keep, um, you know, a lot of that damage down to a bare minimum. Um, otherwise, upgrades in the car I haven't done all that much. I mean, I got a set of floor mats. So that's pretty much a, a requirement where I live, of course, in the summer and the winter months because they put so much salt and crap on the roads that, uh, you know, keeps the carpets looking new. I, I have never washed the carpets on the inside of this car and uh, they're brand new underneath. So uh, I'm not worried about that in the least. I keep the car as clean as possible. I'm going to take it in for detailing in the spring just to keep it nice and fresh. Other than that, um, I had the windows tinted by Fabian at the same time. Um, I put a dash cam in here. I have a 4K. Um, what is that? Oh, that's the Blackview, the 950S or whatever they call it. Anyways, the 4K. I installed that back in the spring when I first got the car. Other than that, no, uh, no other real upgrades. I did win a, a set of 22-inch uh, turbines that I got as part of the referral program. Those have been my uh, summer wheels and tires. And uh, they've been faring quite well. 
Uh, the, the range is, is not the greatest on them because they are a little heavier than the OEM wheels, a little noisier and stuff, but hey, they look good. That's all I cared about at the time, so I put those on. Other than that, oh yeah, I know, a lot of you are going to be asking about the seats. Let's talk about the seats. So you know I have the white seats uh, on this car, and let me tell you, they make a real impression on people, and they're super comfortable. They're really easy to keep clean. And you know what? I love these white seats. Now, I know it's not for everyone. A lot of people seem to think that, you know, they're difficult to keep clean. They're too flashy. Whatever the case may be. The material that they're using on these is amazing. All right, you can see here that seats are looking like great. They're like brand new. They're super easy to keep clean. There's no stains on these. They're super soft. There's only one little problem area and it's right, uh, oh yeah, it's right here. You can see it. You see along here and along this piping. Now, you know, when you get in and out of the car, you get a little bit of rubbing and stuff. This is the only area here in this piping that seems to be rubbing a little bit. It's minor. I'm not too worried about it. It's looking really good. Um, you're getting, a, I'm getting a little bit of, I mean, I don't wear really dark jeans. I tend to wear chinos more than anything, and I'm getting just a little bit of transfer on there. But other than that, the seats are really great. I mean, this area here is the white. This here is like brand new. There's no issues, no scuffs, no nothing. So I really like it. It's uh, it's held up extremely well. But I'll just show you the back seats. You can see here, these are like brand new, no issues whatsoever. They're holding up extremely, extremely well. Um, just a little bit of yellowing around here. This is a fabric that they're using around the edges. So that's getting a little bit uh, yellow or whatever, but hey, I mean, what do you do? But other than that, it's been really good. The only little problem that I find in the winter months here on the Model X is you've got this pronounced lip down in here where the glass comes down and meets the uh, back lift gate. Um, this will get full of snow and ice and stuff and build up. I mean, so I have to kind of very carefully chip it out. So that's a bit of a, an issue. But other than that, it's uh, it's not too bad. The wing here is, uh, I mean, I don't, they stopped, they stopped making the one that was active that went up and down. But um, this is fine. You get used to it. Kind of looks nice on the outside. Other than that, no issues uh, with the charge port or anything like that. I mean, uh, I'm in the habit of taking any snow or ice that kind of builds up before the door closes or, or, or after. So I just keep, um, you know, keep that clean. It's never really been an issue. Now, the one thing that I've discovered, and, and I can't believe that I've never seen this before. Let me just show you what I'm talking about here. When I open the door, there's this little thing right here. When I first got the car, I saw this and I thought, oh, it's some kind of sensor or something like that that determines when the door is closed. But you know what? The other day, <laughs> and I can't get it to come out right now, but the other day what I discovered is when the door was, uh, I mean, by the way, I've also coated all my seals with the uh, silicone stuff, so it largely keeps the door from sticking. But the other day I came and when I opened the door, it kind of stuck there and didn't want to come out. And when I opened the door, I heard this noise and guess what? There's actually an actuator in here. It's a little piston. It sticks out about this far. And I've only seen it twice. When the door is stuck on here, especially on the Model X, because you have no way of pulling the door open because everything is mechanized, that this little guy pushes and it pushes, it, it actually <laughs> pushes the door open away from the seal. And then it just kind of, it, re it retracts into the bodywork. So anyways, if you see this on a Model X, that's what it is. It's a little uh, piston pusher that sticks out and it pushes the door open. Well, there you go. Those are my thoughts on the Model X after one year of ownership. Like I said, really love the car. It's fantastic to drive. I look forward to driving it every single day. And uh, it's held up extremely well. Um, it succeeded my expectations. I mean, I went in with an open mind thinking, you know, Tesla is a new manufacturer. They're going to have some issues. I mean, I had some small little teething issues, but Tesla service has always been excellent. And they really took care of things in a, in a good amount of time and stuff. So no complaints there as far as I'm concerned. So uh, anyways... That's it, and uh, like I said, if you have any comments or thoughts or whatever, put them down in the uh, in the doobly doo below, and I'll try and answer them as best I can. Yeah, thanks for everybody. If you're new to the channel, thanks for watching, and uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later.